Good morning, this is uh, Jeffrey Carrier sitting down with Secrets of the Dam author Jim A. Shaw and uh, this will be the first in a series of character breakdowns that will explain some of the main uh, figures in the Secrets of the Dam series and also uh, our, the initial book in the series, The Kirk. Jim, good morning, how, uh, how are you doing this fine morning? Good, and how are you? Not too bad. Jim, uh, we're going to start off with the uh, protagonist of the piece Jack Stevens. Uh, now, Jim, you had mentioned in previous podcasts his book was quite a number of years in the making. What uh, what motivates you to develop the, the character Jack Stevens? Well, originally, Cast Shadows, which is the original name of the novel, The Kirk, as I said before, was uh, uh, I was dared that I couldn't write a Harlequin romance. So I thought, well, gee, I'll give that a whirl. So I uh, started writing my Harlequin romance. So I had to have a, a, an exciting kind of guy that, you know, uh, would be the woman, female heartthrob. So I, I conceived of this character, Jack Stevens, who was a retired race car driver, and he moves to the town of Woodstock. And as I started writing this, um, I kind of got bored with the Harlequin thing. Romance is not my gig. At least writing romance isn't. Um, so I quickly constructed a story around him that would be a little more exciting and le leads into the, the, the horror thriller genre. So he's a man who finds himself alone in the world uh, because of the recent passing of his wife Melanie. Uh, he unfortunately is haunted by her, his wife's death. Uh, as a result he feels le less than a man. Uh, the day that he, they put her in the ground he, uh, he vows, makes a vow to her memory uh, that he would kill the monster that uh, killed her. His most prized possession is his 1988 Fiero GT uh, that he and his light w late wife Melanie bought together in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, that's pretty well my Jack Stevens thing. Other no. than uh, the reason, well we know mm -hmm. the reason why he moves to Woodstock <laughs> is because he's after the monster that killed his wife. Of course. Uh, now, but, uh, Paul, but I, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but sure, sure. this is crucial to him. He doesn't feel like a man anymore. He, he feels like, uh, he feels, he feels a bit like a coward and because he has these, these feelings inside him that he's, he's truly terrified to, uh, to face the monster again. He's already faced him one time and it didn't turn out in his favor. Mm -hmm. Now, Jack Stevens, uh, obviously being the main, uh, character in the book, what, uh, what inspired Jack Stevens? Any person you met, yourself, uh, uh, maybe a movie, TV hero, a book hero. Uh, what is Jack Stevens? If you could describe Jack Stevens, like physically, what does he look like? Uh, height, weight. Uh, He's a middle-aged guy. Okay. He's thin. He has to be thin for what his line of business was. Um, kind of looks like a, a younger Robert Redford style, Paul Newman. He's kind got of. a. He, he's. I envision him with a rugged look. Yeah. He's. Yeah. He's. He's. Um, I'd say he's handsome. Yeah. He has to be handsome because he started out as a heartthrob in a heart. Yeah. <laughs> rural handsome, you might say, because there's a lot of rural handsome in Woodstock and Carleton County, because you know, hardworking people of the land, either mechanics or uh, lumberjacks or people that uh, you know work with their hands. Now, uh, Jack Stevens uh, himself. Um, you had mentioned that the uh, Harlequin romance, but you were saying something about his motivation is clear but yet unclear because he wants to seek out revenge, but he doesn't know how how to do it. Uh, could you consider him like a hero in the making? Sure, he's definitely conflicted kind mm -hmm. of guy. Uh, not saying anti-hero. He's a coward looking for the for his courage that he's that he's lost. Yeah. Because uh, that character is very prevalent in a lot of uh, uh, gothic books where somebody's trying to seek out a new path for himself, no, no pun intended, because there's been books uh, detailing vampires and people in crisis that, you know, there's been a drop-off. Now, uh, from your own personal life, uh, Jack Stevens is very uh, clo close to you. You know, it's been a character been rolling around in your literary mind for decades. Where, uh, where the whole situation with Jack Stevens... How does he come into, without giving too much away, how does his uh, achievement of improvement, hero improvement, come into focus in the first book without giving too much away? He finds strength through the friends he comes along, that, that come along with him for the journey. 
And that would be friends from work or friends who were recruited? No, they're just friends. That, that the people that he, run in, he runs into as, during the course of the story. Mm -hmm. And um, it's through them that he draws strength to become the person that he once was. Now, uh, now you said to Fierro, uh, his relationship with his vehicle, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, the Fierro was not something he was interested in in the beginning of the Fierro's life. However, his wife had, had, had bought a Fierro before they got married, so she had this car. He didn't exactly like it because he uh, was into, he was pretty well, as a, as a race car driver, he was into the most higher end super duper razor sharp handling sports cars and the 84 Fiera wasn't it but you know he had an he, he in in uh, one of his uh, one of his uh, rules in Jack Stevens guide to love and happiness is take an interest in something that your wife is interested in or your lady loves so he <laughs> took an interest in the car because you know he's a car guy and I uh, started reading about the things and stuff and eventually the 88 model comes out and even though he doesn't he doesn't run to the dealership and buy one in 88 he realizes that it's um it's a it's a world-class sports car so later on uh in in the course of their marriage he he uh, decides in the early 90s that he's going to buy a pontiac fiero and he decides he's going to buy one of the last two that were ever made and these last two fieros were specially raffled off at the end of the production run and, and two employees actually won these cars and they were they were top of the line loaded red Fiero GTs and the distinguishing thing about these two cars is that the signature of every employee and manager that worked in the plant at that time was was on the on the chassis so I used that little bit of real history mm -hmm. and, and sent uh, Melanie and Jack down to uh, Pontiac Michigan to purchase one of these cars he paid 60000 for it that's not, there wasn't cheap change in the 80s and uh, 90s. No, no, that would have been unheard of. It's unheard of even today for buying a Fiero. Now, uh, as the Kirk goes along, there's many, many twists uh, twists in the tale. Now, we're, we're going to get later on to book two, book three. Now, if anybody wants to purchase the uh, first uh, edition of the Kirk, it's available on Amazon, the audio book. Uh, Jim, if you want to talk a little bit about that again, because it's always good to give updates on how the audio book is going. Oh wow! I just got an installment from Nora. Uh, Aga. Nora Aga. Yeah, the it's last. Our good friend, yes. The last. Uh, this last past week, uh, and and it's it's incredible. I'm almost speechless because she brings the character the characters to life in such a way that that they're they're in my mind that way, and it's amazing that she she interprets them the way that that I envisioned them. Especially Jack Stevens. Especially Jack Stevens. Uh, there's a there's a sequence in Jack Stevens where where she she turns a phrase that I had written Jack to say is the exact way with the same voice inflections that I say it to my wife, and it's it's simply uh, whenever I see Francis, I said, "There you are, my love," and I always say it that way. And when she said it that way in the book, I nearly fell off the chair. Because this is a gal that, you know, she lives in Toronto, and I live in New Brunswick. It's, we're two provinces apart, Quebec and Ontario. And so for her to interpret these things that way, it just, it, it's mind-blowing. Now, as we uh, go along with these uh, podcasts and the characters, please keep updated uh, through our Secrets of the Dam site. Our YouTube is under my um, journalism name, JJ Governor Carrier, and there's a lot of podcasts that have already been put up on uh, the, I, I read some of the prologue of the book. We're going to have some portions of uh, Nora's uh, interpretation uh, as a voice actress of the book. Jim, our next part, what are we talking about our next uh, character podcast? Well, the first character that uh, Jack meets as he comes to Woodstock is a, is a fellow by the name of John Curtis. And we're going to keep that for part two of these uh, character podcasts. Jim, thank you so much for the first part. And... Uh, Anything else you want to add before we go into part two for everybody else? No, I just hope everyone's having a good day. Same here. Buy the Kirk. Buy the Kirk and be the Kirk. Bye.